it's me, Clean KB, back for another episode of the Royal Council. With me this week is Noble Natalie and Baron Botch. Rather than um, go after one topic specifically this week, we're, there's just been so much going on in the news, we thought we'd tackle that and get it up as fast as we could for your enjoyment. So, um, there has been a lot going on in wrestling this week um, between AEW not airing on Wednesday and Raw Underground and Retribution and Sonya. So, let's start off with Raw Underground. Botch? I kind of feel like Sam does. If you've been if you've been looking at his blog lately, you'll know that he really kind of doesn't know what to say yet. And I kind of feel the same way. Like I don't know how I feel about it yet. It's bizarre. Um, and I, I guess my issue more than anything is that we already know that wrestling is a series of predetermined outcomes. I won't say it's fake because that'll get everybody upset with me, but it's a series of predetermined outcomes. We already know that that's the way it is. When you introduce something like Raw Underground where it's supposed to be kind of like this fight club atmosphere, we already know that that's artificial. Um, right. So I kind of don't exactly love it from that perspective, but it's also very early, like really, really early. Um, so it's, I don't know, I don't know how to feel about it yet, really. It's just kind of there, you know? See, I think it's an interesting way to introduce some people who have kind of fallen through the cracks. Like Riddick Moss was on the past two weeks and he looked good in there compared to how he looked as 24-7, 365, I-95, European out of the trash champion. Um, but... And it did great for uh, Jessa and Marina this week. They both looked great out there. That's true. Well, that's um, the environment that they came out of. So, of course, they're going exactly. to look they're very Exactly. They're MMA natural. fighters. Sure. Right. And, it, and they've both struggled in the wrestling rings. So, it makes sense that this would be perfect for them. Sure. But... Um, what do you think about how it's been going now that we got rid of the go-go dancers, Natalie? Oh boy. We got rid of the go-go dancers. <laughs> I know I was never a fan of them. I pretty much almost turned off the TV and walked away when I saw them the first time. I was I close was, myself. Yes. I didn't even want to come back. You know, I only come back because, well, there's some, I like the wrestling right. and I like the people I talk with when I'm wrestling. But right. I'm, I haven't decided yet. It's not exactly. really. It's not what I signed up for, but at least there's no go-go dances. Exactly. I think that's where we all are, is none of us know what to think of it yet. So, um, yeah, I, I, I see both good and bad. If they leave Dolph back there, I'll be happy as a clam, because I'm not thrilled with anything he's done in the ring in the past five years personally but that's me it's just bad booking he's just been he's been so oh, i know it's not him. him i know it's all booking and i do feel bad for him completely he has everything he has absolutely everything that it takes he's just been hard done that's all it is exactly though he still needs to shave his head and start over <laughs> <laughs> i knew you were gonna say it just thinking that he needs I to just knew it. Oh, his needs hair to is it. such a ratty mess. Um, sticking with WWE for right now, let, let's move on to Retribution, which I know Botch has a lot to say on Retribution, and I agree on the name thing. So go. Yeah. So here's here's here is my only problem because I only I literally only have one problem with it. Why on earth a kit? Do we have a name for it already? They haven't even revealed themselves. We shouldn't, we shouldn't have a name. Giving, giving it a name before, it, before we can even personify it gives it a sense of organization that it shouldn't have. It, the whole thing, everything about it should feel confused. 
and it should feel like upheaval and disaster. It shouldn't, you shouldn't give me any sense of organization. When you give me a name before they've even appeared unmasked, then you're giving me some semblance of organization that I really don't want. So that's right. kind of my only issue. In terms of the way it was rolled, that was rolled out perfectly. Um, it was done so well at the very beginning and has, it has been done really fairly well ever since. I'm okay with what I've been seeing so far. It's just giving it a name already is kind of a drag and, and Dre agrees with me. So, and I know you do too. So Right. What, what I love personally is that they keep rotating people through. So you see this girl with black hair and purple extensions in there. And so you're like, oh, that's so-and-so. But then that's who they beat up the week before. But wait a minute, who's the redhead now? And who's yeah. this person? Is that guy too tall? Who's that voice? <laughs> and I love that they've had five people. They've had eight people. They've had it. There's been no semblance of order to the people being used. It's mm -hmm. whoever is available. And I don't know if they've decided who will be part of the group yet. But I love that they're completely just changing the people up, throwing hoodies on people and letting them run with it. I agree completely. That's brilliant. Because it gives it this, it, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. It gives it a sense of disorganization and confusion, which yeah. is exactly what that stable or whatever it is is supposed to be about. I absolutely love the fact that you can't tell. Like you did that article and I'm yeah. like. This just going to bring that up. I enjoyed the article. It is. It was fun, but I thought, why are we doing this? Because it's going to change all the time. It, and it was. It is fun to read. If you guys haven't checked it out, you should. It's but, a fun but article. We're never going to know until yeah. they want us to know because they keep flipping people in and out. It's like you think you've got a beat on something, and then they change it. You don't know. I love that I don't know where it's going. Um, what I loved was I was out of the room when they first attacked that night on SmackDown. And I was getting play-by-plays from Stacy, who was in the room. And he's like, oh, the ninjas are attacking again. I went, are you sure it's the ninjas? He's like, of course it's ninjas. They're all in black. I'm like, um, look again. And he's like, yeah. wait a minute. Those don't, that's not Tazawa. Who, what is going on? It was really, you know, totally surprising to him because he'd missed any bit of it coming out. And he just, you know, as a casual fan, he's like, oh, it's the ninjas. Right. And then the chainsaw and the beat. And there's like, wait a minute, those aren't ninjas. Yeah. And no one was safe. The cameramen nope. were not safe. Nope. The audience was not safe. Corey nope. was not safe. None Corey of Corey sold that beautifully. Yes, he did. The way he ran his his like that. Oh. It was great. He was running from them like they were Twitter followers. It was hilarious. He just took off as he took off running as fast as he could. It was great. Just there was a little through. bit of a dirty shot there though, Botch. It was too. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> But he just took off running perfectly. I totally, yeah. I totally bought it. I loved it. I love it when I can suspend disbelief. And I'm old, so it's hard. It's it's really hard for. I think I think all of us can agree to this. It's tough for us to get to that place because we're all kind of jaded. So right. it's really nice when things happen and we don't know that they're coming and we can just go with it. I, I right. absolutely love that. And this, that was one of those times for me when they, when they were introduced because I didn't know it was coming. And I loved it. Loved I it. Say you're, you're old, yet you're the youngest one of the group tonight. Anyway, Natalie, what are your thoughts on Retribution so far? They're the ones who get the power fluctuations and stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I like the chaos they create. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, you! Oh, Natalie doesn't get to see SmackDown much at all, so she hasn't seen, probably hasn't seen them take the part, the ring, or the ropes with the chainsaw and everything. Oh yeah, they're always they're always more demonstrative on SmackDown than they are. On right. Um, uh, we'll make sure if you ha don't have Hulu, I'll get you on my Hulu account, and you, so you can watch at least the end of that SmackDown when they were in there with the chainsaws and everything. It was fantastic. Perfectly done. Just perfect. Oh. I could, I could be a real pain. I have Hulu under my ex roommates if I put it on my old account. <laughs> Shh. 
and now the whole world will know. Exactly. Watch um, this. <laughs> but, well, we're, oh, let's round out WWE. Why? Before we move on. What just happened there? <laughs> Um, we, we had a cut in the show. That's what happened there. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to it. Um, since we're still on WWE, let's round it out with the last bit of news that we wanted to discuss, which is the negative bit of news for this week, and that would be Sonya Deville. And what has happened to her... Mm -hmm. With the the guy breaking into her house, being prepared to kidnap her. When you commented about Twitter followers, the man had been stalking her, had been planning this for eight months. And um, it's just really, really scary. And man, she and Mandy did the right thing by getting out of there. Yes. What What do you think, Botch, on the whole sitch? I'm glad they could. I'm glad they could get out. They don't all make it out. So I'm really glad they managed to get out. This is going to sound very macabre, and I mentioned it backstage, but I do feel this need to keep it real when it comes to things like this. Restraining orders mean nothing. They're cute. They're adorable. They really are, but they're not worth the paper they're written on. And restraining, okay, restraining orders make sense if the individual is well if they are capable of deducement, if they're capable right. of thinking cause and effect, then restraining orders make sense. Then you can shock somebody with one and they'll go, oh, okay, so you're serious, you know. Right. He's not well. No. Most people who do that aren't well. And unfortunately, restraining orders don't take that into account. And because they don't, they're not, again, they're not worth the paper that they're written on. So he's coming back. This is not over. Well, it all depends on what he gets. Uh, they were going to court today to see if he was going to be allowed bail and so forth. That was supposed to be today. I haven't heard anything yet. If, he, if, if they allow it and he's able to post it, he'll be back. Right. I wish her well. She's going to need well wishing. And they said something about holding him without bail. That was the last we knew, but they, he was going to have a ba uh, possible bail hearing today. Well, yeah. I hope he doesn't get it. That's happening. I, I hope he speak. doesn't get bail. Yeah, but you've seen, we've seen the legal system blow this left and right, mm -hmm. and then they let them out, and then they go back and they kill. Yeah. And that's that's why, at this point, if he gets out, I would not stay there if I was Sonia. It doesn't she matter. Needs... He'll find her. It doesn't matter. I know I know how bad that sounds. Please forgive it, me. But it's true. It's, it's the reality of the situation. He's been doing this for eight months. He's going to find her. Therein lies the problem. If he can be locked, if he can be locked away and treated, if it's even possible, then we're in good shape. If they let him out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want and to say it, but you know what I'm thinking. Especially with, with COVID going on right now, <clears throat> it's not hard to find where Sonia is. She's in Orlando, you know? Even if she's not at her home, she it, it's easier. I mean, it's always easy to follow the WWE schedule and know where they're going to be. Sure. But with them being in one place, it's that much easier. Well, I mean, they're doing the they're they're doing the Amway thing now, but still, it's not. But still, it's not in the area. Yeah, no, it's it's their same area. They're still in Orlando. It's going. It's easier to now find her than before, and than ever before, yeah, than ever before, and but it won't stop. You're right. It won't stop anyone, and. It's not hard. It's scary, not hard, how, how easy it is to find somebody's address. Yeah, it is. It's very um, simple. I, I'm not going to mention any names, but a wrestler is building a house 
close to where somebody lives that I know and they he keeps posting pictures on Instagram and just look at the pictures she went oh I think I know where that is yeah. and did a quick drive by and it was obvious so it wasn't hard through an Instagram picture and knowing the city to easily find his house now I have no interest in stalking this guy. I have no interest at all, but it was that easy. It literally from posting the picture to a drive by could have taken 20 minutes. And even if you don't have that information, all you need is the person's name. If you know where to search on the internet, you can get everything else you're looking for. It's just right. not that tough. And if somebody's not well and they're obsessed and that tunnel visioned, won't take them long at all. He'll insist. Exactly. So I don't, I don't know how she gets free of this. And with the way that stalking laws are, and you know this, we all know this. They're horrible. Like they, they I've been won't. dealing with my same stalker for the past 10 years, and I'm getting nothing from any police department it's close like, to her but, or close to me. But he or she hasn't caused you any harm yet. But that's what I'm trying to avoid. Right. Exactly. It's like they won't do anything until the person takes the next step, and that could involve killing exactly and by then it's obviously too late and i fear that's where this is going oh i do too because he was from what i have read dead set on her not making it to SummerSlam. yeah i saw yeah. that earlier. what natalie he was going to take her he was going to keep her and she was not going to go to SummerSlam. exactly he had mace he had zip ties he had a knife and the thing that impresses me is that both Sonia and Mandy are very strong, physically strong women, and they're both versed in how to take care of themselves when need be. And too many times people like that will think they have the situation under control and try to control it themselves. The fact that they got out of there, they did the right thing and didn't try to take him down themselves. <clears throat> Because it's, you know, it's fight or flight and they did the right thing by far. But yeah, I'm, I am very worried about Sonia and in extension, Mandy. Absolutely. Because, you know, the joke going around backstage is kayfabe is dead right now because Sonia, oh no, Sonia and Mandy were together that day. Well, I mean, it. It. it for, number one, and let's let, let's be clear. First of all, I'm the one who said it, and secondly, I, I don't care. It doesn't. We're talking about human lives here. Exactly. It doesn't that it blows that it blows the illusion during a SummerSlam match, some silly wrestling match, kind of no. doesn't matter. Exactly. But it. But it. Having said all of that. It does do that. We do have a bit of a problem here because that did make national news. It is out there. So, again, who cares? But if right. WWE does in any small way, and they should, then they're going to have to do something. We'll, we'll wait and see what they do. The match is still on as far as yeah. we know. Right. So maybe they won't care. Maybe they'll just go with it. Who knows? I hope they just go with it because, I mean, it goes back to all of the Stephanie and Triple H stuff where they did it tongue in cheek, you know, between them for years after they were married, even though, you know, I think my favorite was there was one sec one in ring segment with Shane and Vince and Steph and Trip and she heads to the back and he said, yells, I'll see you at home, Steph. And everyone turns and looks, he goes, um, um, your brother's a gnome, Steph. You know, everybody knows it's all tongue in cheek. That. And I hope they just keep going with the, with the Mandy, Sonia thing, because, well, honestly, straight up, we haven't had a women's hair v. hair match since, um, Victoria and Mandy at Wrestle, or Mandy, Molly at WrestleMania 20. It's time. Well, let me, let me ask you both this. If they do this, do you think that do you think that you both can suspend disbelief and just enjoy it for what it is? Can you do that? Between those two, be because of how 
well put together the storyline has been and how well acted it's been between the two of them, I know that in the moment I can enjoy it. You can? What about you, Natalie? Oh, yes. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I know, I've known all along that they have a life outside of the ring. Yes. Um, yeah, and I knew that back when kayfabe was so important that, yes, they did have relationships that were contrary to what kayfabe was. Sure. You know, I mean, kayfabe is the story. Right. It's the real and life. Yeah. When, when the biggest name in kayfabe completely stops kayfabing, i.e. Undertaker. Yeah. Uh, kayfabe is truly and officially dead. It took him years to do it, though. It took him decades to, to let it oh down. Oh, my gosh. The fact that for... I go back to this specifically, that he... Um, when when his own Paul Bearer was in, had passed away and was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, he still didn't break kayfabe that night. No, he didn't. And I mean, there are other guys like MJF that never let kayfabe go or uh, uh, Bully Ray never lets it go. MVP doesn't really let it go. Oh, really? Not really. Not quite. Not totally. He's kind of like a nicer version of it. But, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't take much to get him back into that, which is great because it helps you stay in the moment. But here in this particular instance, we've got two people that were essentially fighting for their lives one night. And obviously right. they're not thinking about that. Neither should they have. It doesn't matter. But it's, it's that it, there is a bit of a difference there between, you right. know, like Hulk Hogan and the Iron Sheik who actually got along in real life um, versus, you know, the Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville thing. You know who else I, I remember just from meeting him stays in kayfabe a surprising lot. It was um, Teddy Long. Really? Yeah, it surprised me. He was he was very holler, holler, holler the yeah, whole time. That's him anyway, even as a ref, I mean. kind of like that. That was exactly. just him as himself. It's he, um, but yeah, if we're going to talk the, the king of kayfabe these days, it's MJF. Clear, oh, clearly. He's brilliant at it. Absolutely brilliant. He is. He won't drop it for anything. In a lot of ways. Now, and he's really doing great. We will get to him. We actually, he's the topic for another, another show coming up very soon. Him and great talkers in general. Cool. Oh, right, right, right. right. I remember that. That was on the list. Right. So um, many things are coming, guys. Yes. We have so many plans. Um, <laughs> let's, move <on. laughs> let's move on to AEW because there's been a few things that they have done lately that are kind of weird. Um, and kind of uncool in some ways. Uh, well, let's start with weird and go to scheduling and the fact that they moved Dynamite from Wednesday to Saturday. And there's questions about when it will air on Saturday because of the basketball game and go for it, botch. I'm still confused. Yeah, that's not as far as as far as those moves are concerned. Those are network moves, not promotion moves. It's not really their fault. They're just kind of, you know, obviously <clears throat> when it comes to the NBA, the chances of them drawing better ratings are well guaranteed. So obviously they're going to have to play second fiddle to the finals. And as a result, they have to move around. It's just kind of the way it is. It was that way. It's been that way for other shows in the same situation. Just kind of how it goes. Uh, uh, uh... I remember uh, Monday Night Raw being moved because of the Westminster Dog Show. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just... That makes less sense, but okay. I know. <laughs> but they've done it numerous years. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's the fact that AEW landed on Saturday night opposite NXT TakeOver. <laughs> And there's so many questions as to, you know, are they trying to go after those numbers? But, but you were mentioning the ratings from last night. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, I, I think 
I remember Brian Alvarez posted the rating and I died. It was like eight, 800,000. He posted, but like he always does on Twitter. I love looking at his stuff because it's fun, but he posts the, uh, he posts WWE and then their number and then AEW and their number. And he did the exact same thing this time. He posted WWE's number, which was like 800 and something thousand. And then AEW zero. I thought it was really <laughs> funny and I know that's how he meant it. But what we discover, and we were talking about this before we started recording, we discovered this week for the first time that there really is a definite, decisive WWE audience and a definite and decisive AEW audience. We weren't sure before, but now we know there really is, which is great for wrestling as a whole, actually, yeah. because then it means that there's some form of... Um, there isn't necessarily that much overlap. It just means that wrestling as a whole is dragging, you know, 1.5 million people in every Wednesday night. When did, when does that ever happen? Last, like it's been, it's been a couple of decades. Right. So I thought it was really interesting to, to note that, that essentially NXT's numbers did rise a bit, but not as much as I was expecting. And they, it certainly didn't get up in order to, it certainly didn't get to the point that it swallowed AEW's no. number, just took the whole thing because AEW has its own audience. And when AEW isn't on, they're not watching. I thought oh, all you're going to do is look at Twitter to understand that the AEW audience and the WWE audience, are, uh, there is some crossover like us crazies, but there are a lot of people who are, one or the other and don't try to talk to them about the other because they will rip your face off yeah but now you can put a number on it because i mean you know what i mean like on twitter people say things all the time and it's like oh, yeah. you and you and you say you hate wwe but you know you watch don't even try it exactly but now we have to shut up because we know they don't if they say they're not watching it's probably because they're not and i didn't realize that until that number came out. It, it, it really revealed a lot. It was very interesting to see that number come across today. I'm, I, I think having to move AEW opened a lot of people's eyes as to what the numbers really mean on Wednesday night. Yeah, it's like now we really know. And there is no bleed. And I would have thought there would have been. And there just isn't. Quite a I surprise. Mean, Natalie and I both watched NXT this week. We normally watch AEW because I, I run the AEW Dignified Discussion. Natalie hangs out with me in there, and we enjoy watching the show together. Mm -hmm. um, but there weren't any, other than Natalie and I, there weren't any extra people in the Dignified Discussion that mm -hmm. would have been for NXT that would have been in the AEW dignified discussion. Yep. He just didn't come. To, he didn't come. Those two people he did not come. Up. I got to find out if he's interested in Saturday or not. But we, we have one diehard <laughs> AEW fan who joins the discussion every week and adds so much and is so enjoyable to be around. Oh, yeah. Um, that it, it felt last night felt a bit missing without him. Yeah. It did, but, but he does not he does not care about WWE's product. He, he doesn't does watch it. He does not care about WWE and there are a lot of AEW fans who feel that way. And scream and yell about a lot of things and then they watch former WWE stars in AEW. Yeah. I went there. Yeah, you did. I heard it. I was um, waiting for it, but <laughs> The other thing that came up this week, and we have talked, oh my God, so much about the women's division in AEW or the lack thereof. I was about to say, what women's division were we talking about? Because I've never seen it, but continue. It's the Brandy division. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Because I mean, other than the feud between Big Spool and Britt Baker, which I love, by the way. Oh my gosh, they're killing it. But other than that, there is nothing going on other than Brandy and Allie. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The fact that, you know, I, for me, I think it's the fact that Cody was so, I am not going to be AEW champion and that's all there is to it because of this, this, and this. Right. And then you've got Brandy who is, yeah, he is TNT champion, but he's hit, he's, so fighting, so yeah, fighting, and week. defending it and giving us a great match every week. 
Whereas Brandy is getting pushed along because she's reasons. Brandy? She has, because she has reasons. <laughs> she has reasons. And she has an action figure because she has reasons. Because and reasons. you know, there are so many fantastic women <clears throat> who hello, Sheeta. I mean, since you brought that up, she was basically placed in a jobber match last week. She was thrown in there with, with another woman because reasons. And the match happened, and it was over before we could even begin to care. It didn't matter. Right. And this is your title holder, by the way. Exactly. She should be in compelling matches all the time, and she rarely is. It never matters. So... It, it we have no reason to care about either her, and there's no reason for the title to have any prestige. Exactly. We have no reason to care. Go ahead, Natalie. Talking about the action figure, Brandy's the probably lower on the totem pole for me. I would buy a big, small one before I'd buy that. Sure. Same. Absolutely. I would, too. Yes. I would... I mean, that woman kills it every week, every time I see her. I okay. love watching her come on. And to be clear, like, I don't dislike Brandy. I have no problem no. with Brandy. I don't dislike her. I just, my issue is that she's just not a very good wrestler yet. She could be. I'm not she saying she be. can't be. She just isn't yet, and certainly not enough to, uh, are we going here? Are we going to the women's tournament? Let me let you do that. Go ahead. You. Okay, so the women's tournament in AEW. So we have been complaining for, well, nine months that the women's division has been... <laughs> And so they give us a women's tag team tournament. Yay, it's so wonderful, fantastic news. Oh my God, so much greatness. And then they put it on YouTube. <laughs> and so you have to tune in an hour before Raw starts. Remember that it's on because we're not used to it being on. Tune in and watch it on YouTube. Now, having Medusa on there was fantastic. Oh my God, so great. Having Leva on, on, um, on announce with Tony was wonderful. The matches, oh my God, Ivelisse and Diamante. Oh, big swole, little swole. Oh my God. Oh, Tay and, Tay and Anna J. Ah! And it's all on YouTube. Therein lies the problem. It's on YouTube. We're not going to YouTube. It, it, here's the thing, and we were talking about this backstage, and, and I know you saw it, Natalie, you did it, but it, trust me, it's there. Uh, we yeah. were talking about ad revenue. The ad revenue on YouTube has taken a dive, a Yugoslavian belly flop, if you will, because everybody has ad blockers. So yeah. there is, ad, ad revenue is an abstraction at this point on YouTube. The ad revenue, and this may shock them at AEW, is on television. That's where the ad revenue is. Why are we not putting this on television? You've already been accused left and right of not giving women enough attention. You have an opportunity to do it, and you don't. Why don't you? It doesn't make sense. Or at least put some of it on television. Give us a couple of matches a week and let it play out. Do it that way, the way that they do it on NXT if they're doing a tourney. They just kind of let little pieces of it play out right. throughout the course of the show. Do it that way, but to put the whole thing on YouTube, tells, it tells us a couple of things. It tells us that you don't care about ad revenue, first of all. Secondly, it tells us that you don't care about it much as a whole. Right. You don't care any more for it than you do about AEW Dark. I do enjoy AEW Dark, but let's be honest, it's not that important in the grand scheme of things as much as right. I love it. It's just not that big of a deal. And you're telling me that this women's tournament is not that big of a deal, which right. is the wrong message to send, especially when your women's division is so completely bankrupt. The thing is, the matches have been stellar. Every single one of them have been fantastic. Even, I mean, they talked about from the start of the match how green Anna Jay was and how is she going to handle tagging with Tay, who, well, is, is still green and that she's only three years into wrestling. And yet, my God, they need to sign Tay Conti. She is 
<sighs> but they give us these amazingly booked matches on YouTube. They're, that's the only problem, that it's showing up on YouTube and nowhere else. Nowhere else. And you need to watch it. I don't want to go to YouTube to watch wrestling. That's for beauty and sewing stuff. <laughs> right. I mean, I'll, I'll watch it if it's on YouTube. But again, what you're telling me is that it isn't important enough to put it on TV. It has no prestige right. to you. It's not important to you. Then why should it be important to me to watch it? Exactly. And I got into a big discussion about this online yesterday. And people were like, well, maybe they should just put more women's matches on dark. That Gosh, yeah, that'll be better. Purpose. It's sure. still oh, absolutely, not on TV. sure. Yeah, I don't know where to find it. It's the AEW um, channel. YouTube channel. Yeah. Follow but, the um, wrestling YouTube channel. That on YouTube too. Yeah. Oh my good God! I want to see. I want to see these amazing matches, but I want to see them on TV. Dark is fun. I give my time to Dark every single week, and it really is fun. And they bring in the, the best part about Dark is that they bring in indie guys to kind of take a look at them, which is how we end up with amazing guys like Will Hobbs. My gosh, they brought in Mr. Grimm once. That's how we got Suge D to begin with, who unfortunately now is gone. <laughs> that is such a travesty. Yes, why didn't they sign him? Maybe they he didn't want to do it. Who knows? Oh, really? He may not have. He tends. No. He's a bit of a rolling stone. Maybe he didn't want to sign. Who knows? It, it, it doesn't matter. He will land on his feet either way. But we get a look at all these great indie guys getting their shot there. So it's, yeah. it's used for great purpose. And it is fun. It's just, it's obviously not that important to them because they're throwing it up on YouTube. But rather I than giving it. part of the show to it, which they, they could do it with that too. They just don't, which is fine, I suppose. But it's, again, it just goes back to what we said earlier. They're showing that it's not important because they're throwing it away on YouTube. It's ridiculous. I don't understand. You know, they said when they were starting this up that the women were going to be right there. And while they don't have many on the roster, Especially now during COVID, there are so many women available. We saw that in the turn, the tag tournament. You know, signing them and actually putting them on TV. Exactly, they need to. They've got two hours. They could do it. <laughs> you don't just have to give me one that you're throwing away involving the title holder. I that, know that should it, never happen, but it's been happening it, for weeks on end. It has, and none of the, I don't understand why they're not listening to the fans. You'd think that Cody and Tony would have noticed that the fans are screaming online for, for the women to be on TV. And they do listen with certain things, to be fair. Like the whole Nightmare Collective thing was an absolute disaster. They listened to the fans. It went away, yeah. thankfully, because right. it was dumb and Brandy couldn't pull it off. No. She's just, that's not who she is. And it just, no. it, just it didn't work. But, why, but to your point, Queen, like, why are they not listening now? If we're telling you we just want to see women involved in your scripting process and see them on TV. You've got what you need there. You could certainly use more, but you yeah. kind of have what you need there. Big Swole is platinum. Britt Baker is becoming so faster than anybody thought she could. Oh, yeah. Peta is platinum. Nyla Rose could be something. She just needs to be trained a little more. You could right. fix what's wrong. She's got Vicky Guerrero, which is great. Exactly. You've got pieces in place. Just use them. Please just use them. It's really all we're asking for. But to your point, Queen, they don't. And I have no idea why. I don't understand why they don't when they said, have said all along that they're, they're going to listen to the fans and we're going to do this and it's going to be great. And AEW has been amazing all the way around, except for this. We were literally, uh, Natalie and I were literally just talking about the, before we started, before you got on even, uh, the fact that we are not like, I know for me, I have had to struggle through NXT the last few weeks 
It's, it's, yes. it's hard because yeah. AEW has just been absolutely white hot. And I'm in the dignified discussion every single Wednesday night for AEW. Yeah. And that's, it's like when it's over and it, over the last few weeks, I've been like, oh, wait, I got to watch NXT too. And it's right. not, but I'm not excited to watch it like I was. No. Like, I got to, I'm on a wrestling set. I got to watch it all. So, and I kind of have to fight my way through it. And sometimes I'll be doing something else while it's on. And I never used to do that. Like I, I would just be glued to NXT. And now it's something's, uh, it's, it's a whole, this is a whole other discussion, I know, but something's just off now in a way that it's not with AEW and they so have the hot hand right now in so many ways. And I know Natalie enjoys it just as much as I do. So, and she yeah. wants to talk. So we're going to let her. <laughs> when I found out that I was going to be able to watch NXT last night, I was so excited. And I turned on NXT and I'm sitting there going, what happened? This isn't this interesting. Oh my God. I mean, don't get me wrong. I guess I did start watching AEW. I, I liked them anyways, but I watched and started going there because Kendra and uh, Queen and I were talking. And then it's like, no, I just enjoy watching AEW. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'd be in the NXT dignified discussion if that had kept your attention more. Yeah, I, but I have no intent. I, yeah. The only reason I watched the whole thing last night was because it was only two hours, and I think there was something coming up that I wanted to see near the end. And it, whatever it was, it didn't strike me as all that great. <laughs> the, um, I, I have to say, watching it, I was completely drawn in for the women's matches, completely. And I will say that before NXT aired uh, yesterday, I watched the episode from the week before. So I had four hours of NXT by the time it all ended. And the women's matches were fantastic. Of course, I got to watch my girl, Maya Yim. And... Then the end of uh, the the bits between Cody and, or not Cody um, Adam Cole and Pat McAfee were brilliant in a way I never expected. Who knew that Pat McAfee could be that good? I had a feeling from the first time we saw him in a suit and shorts on a pay per view kickoff show. Something about him just screamed, "This guy has it!" To me, but nobody else saw it, and so I kept my no. trap shut. I did not I have just, a feeling, in fact. No. I, I, had, no, I had a feeling. But, <laughs> but, but did you think he'd be that good, though? Name the yes. people supposed to know. What did he did. do? Okay. I did. I Something I about him from that first night I saw him on that kickoff show, the night he really ticked off Vince McMahon by wearing shorts with his suit jacket. Um... Oh, that pissed him off so much. It was hysterical. It was but, ridiculous. It was like, um, do it. I know, but he rocked it. And that, that night, I didn't have to listen to the uh, either of the other two guys who I can't even pull up at the moment. The, the other two non-directly WWE guys who are on the kickoff shows every before pay-per-views, the bald oh. guy and the curly-haired guy. Sam and oh so yeah, Sam and who's the bald? What bald guy do you mean? Um, short, chubby, short, chubby, bald guy. Oh, uh, De Peter Rosenberg. Peter Rosenberg, thank you. Yes, yeah, I'm slow, but See, I get there. Yeah, I like I I like Rosenberg. I don't like Sam. Sam, um, but as soon as I saw Pat, I just like something is gonna happen with this guy. Something big. I just didn't see that. I did. Like the, he was just perfect. I mean, and given the given the way that the storyline is written and where he's coming from as an outsider, he had to be the heel. He had to be. Oh yeah. But I didn't think he was going to be that good. I was just oh, sitting he's... there going, "Oh my gosh, this is brilliant!" And and Adam was brilliant too because he said nothing until the very end. He just stood there and took it. It was just genius. He could have gone on for another ten minutes. I'd have been fine with it. 
Me too. It, just, it, it felt like he was just not running out of content. It didn't. Fe- it is scripted, but it didn't feel that way. Right. It just. And he was just up there, like shooting, like telling the truth. It was so fun. And as you said, the fact that he didn't have music that just added to the grittiness of it. The fact yeah. that he's not scheduled and and he doesn't have music and he's not a wrestler. But everything I've heard, he is working his butt off to be ready. He is. He's really excited about this. Yes, yeah, Sam and mentioned it. Sam was the one who said it. That oh, he doesn't. He doesn't have music. And I went, oh my gosh, you're right. We've just accepted it, you know, ever since the mid eighties, we've just right. accepted it as so much a part of the product that when it's not there, you almost kind of don't catch it. Right. But in this particular evening, I did right when he mentioned it, and when it just, it makes him feel more outside. Right. Whereas even great. Maria Menounos and, and Snooki and all of the other people who have, you know, come into the WWE for one-offs, they all end up with music. I'm sorry I said Snooki, but um, no, 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 it was just came to it's mind. True. She did have music and everybody does. But the fact that right. he didn't made him felt so much more like an interloper. And the fact that he was he was in the ring, but his three football buddies were not and they were not getting in there. It was great. Yeah, they no they really not just word, not just the scripting of the words and the selling of the words, but where each person stood was per, I mean, Cole in the middle of the ring and him in the corner backed up, but with his boys on the outside and no one willing to get in the ring. And oh my gosh. It was so well done. So well done. And yet they didn't draw in the AEW fans to watch it. Nope, not at all. It was purely that that's what an NXT audience, for the most part, anyway, that's what an NXT audience would normally look like. Now, when AEW is on, they take away some of that because generally it's like 700 something, like right. 700 something. But, but yeah, they, it, it, they didn't get the, they didn't get all that 1.5. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see what AEW gets on Saturday night, partially mm-hmm. going against NXT takeover. 30. Yeah, because it's only partially. It's just the kickoff, yeah? I think that... I, is that when it's, it's overlapping on the kickoff? I don't I know I believe exactly. it's just the kickoff, and if it's the kickoff, I pity the kickoff. Well, there's also a question... There's question because if the basketball game runs long... It could happen. It could right. absolutely happen. It's a variable. Be interesting to see what the AEW numbers are for that show. We will absolutely post them on the site. Definitely. And that will tell the whole story. It truly will. Really know. I think we've pretty much hit on all the news and more so for this past week. Um, I think we'll end it here for this week. Um, for Noble Natalie, Baron Botch, I am Queen KB for Wrestle Royalty. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the important things. Please make sure you subscribe down below and hit that little bell because that bell will alert you and let you know when we're when we have put another video in. And um, check us out on Twitter and Instagram, and we're all over the place. And of course, WrestleRoyalty.com. Um, And on that note, I'm Queen KB. Bye! (laughs) 